This is Amelie. I don't put lipstick on a pig. The amazing Annelie Hansen. Annelie Hansen. She's in Sweden. Annelie, Annelie, Annelie. She's a brand strategy specialist, very professional. She's done everything, worked in marketing, commercials, branding. She loves dogs. So without further ado, Annelie Hansen. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is my second episode. I'm so excited. <laughs> and I'm here with James Martin. Welcome, James. Welcome, James. Yeah, it's weird, actually, because everybody knows me as Made by James. I think even my mum and dad call me Made by James now. So, uh, really? No, of course they don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's so weird, though, because, I mean, I'm... Like James Martin's a famous chef here in the UK. I don't know. Oh. If you've heard of it. And my no. brother's called Chris Martin. So, and that's the head lead singer of Coldplay. Yeah, so, yeah, I um, know. So I've had to make up another name. So Made by James is kind made of Made by James. That's you. Yeah. And you know James, Made by James, that yeah. I went uh, live on Instagram just an hour ago. And I told them that I was going to meet you and they were really happy. And I even got some questions for you from my audience. So sweet. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to answer anything that can help anybody. That's kind of a bit of a mission of mine now. Well, it's been a mission for a while. Yeah. Help more people. That's the yeah. way I love that. That's my mission, too. I feel like we have so much in common. But, you know, I told you we just we just talked one time before and you actually reached out to me and I was a little bit nervous because I, I told you that I think you might be too cool for me to reach out to because I was like, I don't think I would have the guts to reach out to you because you look so cool and and rock. So rock I, I don't know if, if I was too weird and awkward to reach out to you, but... Mm. No, I mean, looks can be deceiving. Do you know what I mean? Behind this behind the tattoos and the beard is um is a quite a shy you know he quite I quite like to be alone quite shy but do you know what it is mate like I spent so long kind of worrying about who I was and what other people thought about me and then as soon as I decided to not worry about that everything kind of changed. And now whenever I see somebody cool, it doesn't matter if they've got 10 followers yeah. or 500,000, I will reach out and I'll say, do you fancy a chat? You know, I think, I think that's maybe my superpower is my yeah. now inner inability to always not switch off and always want to speak to cool people. That's kind of the way I roll now. If I want to speak to somebody, I'll reach out. And if they say no, not a problem. If they say yes, great. That's the way to go. I love that. I love that. So, okay, so let's dig into it right away. Um, for people who don't know you, Made by James, can you just tell them a little bit short about who you are, where you live, and what you actually do for a living? We can see a little bit about it here in the background, sure. but yeah. Yeah, um, so where do I? I'm, I'm based in the UK. I'm on the south coast of the UK uh, mm -hmm. in a little village. Uh, called Shedfield, um, tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, but yeah, for anybody that doesn't know me, my name is Made by James, aka James Martin, um, and I am a brand identity designer uh, here in the UK. But a lot of my clients are worldwide. I think that's the the beauty of the old internet. You know, mm -hmm. allows you to allows to open up an audience, all the rest of it, which is great. Um, so yeah, I'm. Fully focused, day in, day out, brand identity design. I own a design agency called Baby Giants. That's kind of like the service yeah. client-facing side of what I do. But um, over the last seven years, I've kind of been growing Made by James, you know, which is mm -hmm. almost like a bit of design therapy, you know, a bit of an mm. honest voice in the design world. Um so, yeah, and that's kind of been taking off a little bit. So I would say I build brands and mm -hmm. I build up creatives. That's kind of like oh. my balanced mission at the moment, which I, which I quite enjoy because it keeps every day a little bit different for me. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. That's I cool. love that made by James. And <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you, you know, 
guys. It's going to be weird you calling me Made by James now, but I, I quite like it. Good. I mean, if your mother is calling you Made by James, why can't I do Nobody it? Nobody calls me James. Okay. They're Made by James. They, they call me Mama Anne, and I don't know if that is so much better. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, 230,000 followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. That's where we are right now. But I want to like take you back in time because I always think it's interesting to start a little bit more from start because that often tells a little bit about why we do what we do now. Sure. So if you think about like your mission now and, and what's important for you to help creatives, like when do you think that started out and what is the story here? behind before you even started out doing what you do you know yes yeah, a great question um and i suppose i mean there's a very long story but i'll keep it short because i know we've got a lot of things to yeah chat. yeah but no i think so basically i was struggling not necessarily struggling to find my way but i've been in the design industry for almost 18 years now so mm. helping clients um, you know very client facing you know exchanging time for money that kind of thing that we all do as creatives you know yeah. the churn yeah. the churn the churn and um about seven years ago when I before I was I was on in, on Instagram I was jamalicious I was just sharing a bit of you know my work you know sharing a little bit of a few pictures of my dog uh, yeah, there and some pictures of me drinking around the fire and I don't even drink anymore which is a weird thing to think about um yeah. but you know so and about seven years ago I kind of started to realize that okay I really enjoy design um but what what's next for me you know I'm all, I'm always kind of getting to a point and then trying to figure out what I want you know why why am I doing the, the things that I'm doing you know what do I want to be in five years or do I want to be in 10 years so kind of about seven years ago I kind of thought you know what I really want to do every day I would just love to do logos all day every day I'd love to build brand identities that's something that I really really enjoy and at that stage I wasn't doing a huge amount of it you know I was maybe doing two or three a year you know nothing mm -hmm. to be able to live by mm -hmm. um, but the agency obviously we do where we do SEO hosting email marketing and all the rest of it so there was enough yeah. money coming in from yeah. other spaces so I kind of thought you know what I want to do I'm going to niche I'm going to niche down into logo design and see how that goes so um, I then kind of coinciding with that I read a book by Austin Kleon, you'd have definitely yeah. had a bit. Show I you love, show I, you love well. I love all of his books because you can yeah. read them in about two hours and they got lots of pictures in them. So yes. that's why I love them. But they are yeah. so on point. They are so on point. And I read that one afternoon when I was kind of leaning into this journey of like niching. And I was like, am I making the right decision? What should I do? Um, am I an idiot? Because you know, everybody tells you. Everybody, if you ask for somebody's opinion, they're going to give it to you, you know, whether whether they've got one or not. Mm -hmm. If you ask somebody what they think of something, they'll give you an opinion. So mm -hmm. my my advice, don't ask for opinions. That's a really good, I think. <laughs> good thing that's to good. Do. I uh, thought you then, said every, everybody thinks you should niche down. And that's why I did this, because I'm always talking about the importance of niching down. Yeah, so. exactly. But it's, I think it's a struggle for, I think it's a struggle for a lot of creators because, mm -hmm. um, there are so many, you know, I would classify a lot of creatives as multi-potentialites. They can generally turn their hand to anything. And when yeah. growing up, you know, you know, we grew up in a world about social media, you know. Yeah. So my job in a, as a young intern in a design agency was doing everything. Mm -hmm. If I went in there and said, I only do logo design, they would have said, fuck off, twat. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. But you know what, isn't that exactly because this is where I feel it's a difference for me. I always recommend people right after school to try to work somewhere, maybe three to five years, try everything, be curious, just yeah. go out there and test things. Then when you start your own business, then when it starts to be really important to find your niche, because being like one of many in the sea of same 
thousands of designers out there, it's a little bit more difficult. But when you work for someone who freelance or work at an agency, try a lot of things. That's how I feel. Like, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, it's. A, I mean, I personally believe I'm, I'm the same as you, but I know I would not be where I am today without all that background knowledge. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I think the problem is people are niching straight away. Yes. Um, and they yeah. don't know the industry as a whole, let alone the mm. niche in their industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that's why a lot of people are getting to year one, year two, maybe year three and giving up because they're not getting anywhere. They don't mm. they don't have yeah. enough industry yeah. knowledge to be able to niche within a specific sector of that new industry. So mm -hmm. I've yeah. always been a big believer in like, I think I'm a better logo designer because I understand design. Yeah. You know, yeah. I understand web, I understand animation, I understand mm -hmm. print, layout, typography. That has made yeah. me a, like a successful logo brand identity designer. Yeah. I don't think I would be where I am without that knowledge. So it took me like 10 years before I niched. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I know everybody's different. Yeah. So uh, but I'm like you, I would definitely say, look, try like there, because like, I know there's like, I don't like to kind of generalize too much, but I know mm. there's a lot of so what social media does, it creates this cloud where people think everything's easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they go, well, if that guy's making money as logo design, I'm gonna be a logo designer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're following trends. What's trendy? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. logo design, brand identity wasn't that cool. Do you know what I mean? It's always been okay, yeah. but, you know, and brand strategy three or four years ago wasn't that cool and now i mean everybody overnight went from logo designer to brand strategy yeah and that's why you, know. you know and my friend says anley be careful to give out knives to kids and i know what she means because i've been doing brand strategy for, for like 15 time. 20 years even yeah. though over that over 20 years building yeah. brands but i'm mm -hmm. like you you know it's a really good to have a why i have a wider background and then i kind of everything condensed down to yeah. building brands and being yeah. brand strategies, but it's nothing you can do just overnight. So I yeah. totally with you, but I, I still want to, okay, I want to go back a little bit until you had this moment seven yeah. years ago, but yeah. when did you start your agency? Like, was that 15 years ago or Yeah, no? so that was Baby Giant Yeah, is 12 years old now. Well, so I worked okay. within an agency before, babe, before starting my own company yeah. about five years. And then, yeah, 12 years ago, or just, yeah, I think we've just yeah. done year 11 books, Baby Giant was born. And wow. then five years, yeah, five years into that is when I kind of niched down my skill set into wow. brand identity. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, to kind of kind of d dive into that a little mm -hmm. bit more, you know, what I was yeah. doing, I was, I was reaching out to a lot of, you know, I was on like Instagram was kind of quite a cool thing you know it's got a bit mm -hmm. of a funny rep now but you know I still yeah. enjoy it you know whatever it is it doesn't mm -hmm. matter yeah. you know um but you know there was like there were loads of people creating really cool logos but mm -hmm. nobody was really sharing how they got to that idea like the process oh, like yeah. I couldn't find out other people who drew I couldn't find you know I couldn't get any information from people on like what this logo meant um yeah. you know I reached out to a load of people and they never got back to me um which is which is funny because they were like they had hundreds of thousands of followers when mm. I reached out to them and now I've overtaken a couple of them so it's quite fun <laughs> um but that's by the by it doesn't matter but yeah the, kind of, the idea was like okay do you know what I'm going to do I'm going to share my process I think that's really interesting thing mm a really interesting to, thing to see because I I love like logo design and brand identity but I think all the good stuff is what happens before the end result before yeah. the outcome so all that thinking you know mm -hmm. why why did you do yeah. that you know why did you do this why did you do that so that was the stuff I started to share and share my sketches and then what I started to learn from that is that people were really interested in it. People started to talk to me about their process and ask mm -hmm. me questions about why I draw when I could go straight into the computer and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So um, that 
has then since evolved into, you know, Made by James Today, which is author of a book, mm-hmm. courses. Yeah. Um, what else is there? You know, private logo communities, coaching programs. So, and that's all kind of yeah. started this year, you know, so beginning of yeah. January 2022. I think that's the year we're in now. So, um, but yeah, so now I'm kind of leaning more and more into this kind of trying to be like mm-hmm. an honest guide for people. Yeah. Because it's quite a funny, I know the design industry on online is quite crazy, but the mm-hmm. logo design, brand identity space is, it's like the wild, wild west. You know, there are people like stealing other people's logos and then using that to sell their own services. And then yeah. they get moody when you ask them to take it down from their feed. So, I mean, it's absolutely bonkers out there, but you know, you'll know it, you'll know it as well as I do. So, but yeah, that's kind of where I am now is just trying to be, I kind of I would like to classify myself as an as an honest voice who will tell you my story you know that's all I can do is tell you my story so I love that that, James okay so I really want to want to dig a little bit deeper because I like to go a little bit deeper but often same with me you know I love sharing I love teaching I love helping people out I feel I can see that in you as well. And now when you start doing more and more stuff like that, yeah. what, where does that come from? Like if we don't talk about work, like mm. go, go back a little bit, like in time, like, can you see a pattern from you were younger or something that makes that spark in you that you really want to help other yeah. creatives? It's, I mean, yeah, Christ, like counseling, Annie. Um, <laughs> no, I think, no, I think it's, I mean, I, you know, I was a sportsman growing up, you know, I was always, I thought my destiny was to be a professional sportsman growing up. Yeah. Uh, but then I hit like 16, 17 and found girls, booze and drugs. So that kind of oh. went out the window. Um, but basically I was always the captain of my sports teams. Um, mm. I I was, I suppose what you could classify a leader of those teams and leader yeah. of those people. I would take them into battle. Mm. Um and you know try and be you know although I went off the rails somewhat you know in my later years definitely in my early years I wanted to be somebody that you know my teammates looked up to um and then when I I got kicked out of school drug related issues you know lots of kind of growing up pains with teens and stuff and all the rest of it um I mean, I share my story openly on Instagram, yeah, so if anyone yeah, 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 find yeah. that out, they can do that. But mm. and then, you know, after kind of when I got back on track and I found art again and I started being creative, I actually went back and taught for a year at my old school. Um, so I was wow. early twenties, um, but the people that I would, was teaching, they were thirteen years old, so the age gap was too close. So I was teaching them mm. art. And, I th- I know I've always had this teaching bug in me. I'm a I've got a PGCE and teaching. I think yeah. that's what you call it. It was a long time ago. Um, so I've got like it. qualifications <laughs> yeah. as a teacher. You know, yeah. not yeah. not long big ones, but you know the first stage mm-hmm. of that. So I know it's something that I've always wanted to do in some respect, but I suppose I've never really, I, until now, found what it is. I feel that I can teach and what I can offer. Yeah, you because know, it's been a long journey of me trying to figure out myself. You know, yeah. early 20s, I was still trying to figure out, you know, who I was. So it was impossible for me to impart yeah. any knowledge or share any wealth of knowledge mm-hmm. or value because still trying to find myself out. But especially over the last, I would say, five years, yeah. I, I have a very clear identity. I have a very good understanding of who I am why I do what I do Mm. Um, and every day that becomes clearer and clearer and clearer Um, so that's where I think that kind of teaching um, role came in was probably sport in the early years you know county rugby county cricket um, you know, all the way from the age of 11 up to 16 and leading teams and, um, 
you know, winning awards and doing stuff like that as a, as a teen. I won yeah. Young Sports Player of the Year in when I was 16. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably where the kind of that role has come from. Mm-hmm. Um, and now it's just evolved into this beard. So that's how I love that. Okay, so you didn't have beard, obviously, when you were younger. But no, who, no, 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 who no. were you like when you know you and look at those teenager movies or stuff and, you know, this captain like uh, were you like that handsome guy were you the funny guy like who was who were you in school like oh i don't know i don't i can't answer that question um <laughs> definitely wasn't funny um you know i think you know i think you know i mean i look back on my kind of younger years with like great fondness but also you know i didn't i wasn't fulfilling my potential Well, mm-hmm. looking back on it now, like, I know that like, everything I went through has got me to this point today. I'm exactly where I need to be. But, yeah. you know, I could have, with a bit of dedication and a bit more commitment, I know mm-hmm. I could have made it in sport and done very, very well. Wow. Uh, but for some reason, I didn't choose to do that. And that is probably because it wasn't my calling. It wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's funny because I do, I look back on my youth as, you know, I had so much fun, you know, I really was, I was happy. I was always pretty happy. But, you know, then, you know, you fall into the wrong crowd, you know, mm. your kind of past catches up and you past traumas and stuff and that, that kind of, evolved and see I went to a very good school but ended up getting kicked out with no A levels, no nothing and mm. left got kicked out of home when I was 17. Um you know and kind of had to figure you know, I had to grow up quick but I didn't yeah. grow up quick. I ended up just doing more drugs for another couple of years until I woke up one day and just thought there's something, you know, there's I'm I'm supposed to be more, you know, there's more mm. to me than waking up and just getting drunk there's more yeah. to me than that so yeah. um and that was i mean that's a 20 year journey by itself <laughs> so yeah to today so but yeah. but do you think when we talk about that i think that's so interesting because both of you and i are very much on on that journey you know maybe like a lot of self discovery and doing a lot of hard work a lot of people do that other people don't do it <laughs> ever in their yeah. lives it's a lot to to look at your own shadow and look what yeah. you're not great at don't have to always go out there and and perform and just being you but i i i think it's a it i think it's a wonderful journey but also very challenging but when yeah. you said that like you know the 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 struggle you had with with drugs and alcohol and everything Did you one day like, do you think you need to to realize it yourself and wake up and like, okay, I'm ready for a change now? Or was it someone like hit you in your head and like, you need to change? You know? Yeah, well, how did you it, how did you get to that place? Yeah, well it was yeah, so I mean, I hadn't spoken my to my dad for like two years, you know. Mm. We're very we're always very close. We're very close now. Um and I think it was just it just got to a stage where it was either I was, you know, without being too dramatic, I was either going to end up in jail, yeah. dead, or I could do something about it. Because uh, some of the stuff I used to do, um, I should not be alive today. Do you know what I mean? It was, oh. you know, there was a lot of, you know, very bad things I did. Um, and for some reason they never got me into too much trouble. Do you know what I mean? And I always, and I think I, like I said, I woke up one day and I knew I was letting myself down. So it was quite an internal thing. Um, I think it was, I think the, the monotony of waking up, doing drugs, going to sleep, waking up, drinking, going to sleep, not really settling in a job, uh, not really settling with any of my girlfriends or whatever, you know, it was kind of, it got tiring. I yeah. think I think not being anything was becoming tiring when I could look back at that age to three years or two years prior 
and be a county sportsman and the captain of his teams and somebody that people look up to. So yeah. I think a kind of it's almost like I went up to the top went right down to the bottom and I didn't really enjoy it down there. I didn't really enjoy yeah. the people, um, you know, the world that I was in. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like trying like meeting up dark alleys with strange people to exchange stolen goods for drugs. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a weird, yeah. it's a weird thing to kind of think back on now. So, um, but yeah, so like for me, it was a it was a moment of clarity where um if i don't change yeah that's it do you know what i mean yeah. what do you, what do you want to do so that and that's kind of and it was quite you know people say you kind of you know you see the light you know all these yeah. kind of crazy and it was very much like that i woke it up was. And i was just yeah. like what am i doing what am i physically doing wow. and the next day i went in enrolled in college phoned up my mum and dad, told them I wanted to come home, told them I was going to change. And that was 20 something years ago. And now we're here today. So, um, yeah, it's quite a, oh. yeah, it's quite a, to be, but to be fair, I also know that that was something that I was supposed to, not necessarily mm-hmm. had to go through, but I think it, I think that moment and those moments that I was having, which were pretty dark, yeah. have, like sparked and shone a light in me to kind of go mm. like that like every day now I put absolutely all the effort in I can you know I show up every day yeah. uh, even when I don't want to you know there's some days when we don't want to show up and, yeah. like that. and you know for me I don't sit around and whinge I get on with it do you mm. know what I mean because I yeah. know how precious everything is so yeah. um, it's actually been a bit of a superhero the old twat has actually allowed me to become this twat which is which is quite good <laughs> i love that thank you so much for sharing that i really appreciate it uh I, I, I would like to talk to you about you know identity and personality because i think when we talk about logos yeah and brand identity design there's a lot of companies out there who's really boring, to be honest. If we look at the corporate, for example, and they like they don't have a personality, a lot of them. So as a brand strategist, my one of my biggest challenges, I would say, is actually to really dig into that company culture and to really like find the the personality and the identity and not have to to come up with something because there's oh. always something there, but you just need to find it. So yeah. when in your job, like, how important is the company's identity when it comes to creating a logo? I think it's, I think it's imperative. You know, I think we've all got a story to tell. Um, and I'm, I personally, like, my process is, you know, I see myself as a storyteller. I don't see myself as a logo designer or a brand identity designer, even though yeah. I... I can't just tell people I'm a storyteller because they won't know. They're like, I don't even know what that is. You write books, but yeah. Yeah. so like for me, I kind of see myself as a as a storyteller. Like whenever mm. I'm creating something, there, yeah, there's a story in there. There's a there's a narrative. Um, there's a journey. Um, because and that doesn't necessarily mean that the design has to be complicated mm. or overly thought. But for me, I love to represent people their audience a company you yeah. know within the simplest way possible I, I always kind of say like you know it doesn't have to be detailed to contain detail so mm-hmm. yeah I'm very much on the same kind of vein of thought as you as I love you know like bringing personality to the forefront and I know there's there's a there's a lot of argument for you know stripped back what people are now calling blanding do you know what I mean mm-hmm. Rather than yeah. branding you know and I, I can understand certain industries um especially tech um and other other spaces the importance of simplicity but I think yeah. I think it's got to a point now where it's simplicity for the lack of creativity mm-hmm. do you know what I mean yeah. it's yeah. almost like this well they're doing it so we should do it yes. you know yes. there's no thought yes. 
There's no, doesn't seem to be any thought or any agenda mm-hmm. rather than for the sake of it. And I think that's where the, I think that's where the industry is getting lost a little at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's kind of trying to be too, not, it's trying to do less, but actually doing nothing. Mm-hmm. And when you do yeah. nothing, it's it's obvious. Um, I know some of these companies have, you know, brand identity is such a, so much more than a logo, obviously, as we both know, and I know the audience will know as well. So yeah. there are ways you can inject personality and story and the values of the yeah. narrative through um, copy, through yeah. words, yeah. through um, other bits and pieces that run through uh, the identity. But, you know, for me, I think it does start. I don't think, I think people are missing a trick now, you know. And like I said, I think it's more of like, They'll do it, so we should do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I yeah. mean? I, I, I think that's where the scary bit, and I think it will change because it can't go, there, it cannot be any more simple than it's going right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I also, uh, because I wonder, you know, I love your process. I follow you on Instagram. And uh, so for people in here, don't follow you, made by James is yeah. the Instagram handle. And uh, like, if I would ask you about logos, like what makes a good logo for you? If you would say three things that really makes a good logo, what would you say from your perspective? Um, application. Mm. So I think it has to work for the places it needs to work. So yeah. you have to be very wary of where that logo is going to be used. So I think yeah. that's really important. Um, I believe it has to be versatile. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, we can talk about responsiveness, you know, so that's slightly different from application. So I would say versatility is how it can change. Like, can it be modular in a way so it responds to different formats and different places and different sizes? Um, and obviously the application being where it's physically going to yeah. be yeah. like on whatever. That's points. Yeah. Um, you know, I believe, you know, it has to be memorable. You know, mm. I, I truly believe that, you know, great design is remembered um, and not great design is forgotten. Um, and I think that's been the same for a long time. Yeah. You know, is that, that that kind of process and thinking hasn't failed for millennia do you know what I mean so um those are the kind of three like versatility application and you know memorability you know logo has a job to do ultimately and it's got to fulfill that job if you would say if you will talk to people now who's not been in the industry for so long and I pretend that I'm the client because client often ask so what is that job yeah what does that logo have to do what would you say what would I say? Um, well, first, I mean, there would be a process. There'd obviously be a process of discovery. Uh, so I'd always have some sort of workshop. Um, yeah, I wouldn't go deep, deep, deep. I, sometimes I do brand strategy, but a lot of my clients have either already done that um, or um, they don't have the budget, some people. Yeah. So well, I okay. always do like a two or three hour workshop where mm-hmm. we kind of dive into values and mm. um, all the nitty gritty that I would obviously need. Yes. Uh, so that would, you know, because I've, I've got to have enough information to be able to create the stuff that I create. So mm-hmm. it works for what they need it to do. Yeah. So to kind of go back to your question is mm. like, which was, what is it? Why do I need a logo? What does, what's yeah, a logo? What, got? Yeah. What, what's a logo going to do? Like what kind of work? Why, why is it important to have a logo? Why is it important to have uh, a logo? Well, well, Ali, I think um, your <laughs> logo <laughs> um, for me it's a you know it's a it's a conversation starter. It's a facilitator of conversation. So mm. whenever I whenever you see somebody's logo, I believe you get a feeling. You. Yeah. Um, it's often maybe the one thing that you remember from a company. You know, I know we talk about things like brand strategy and the importance of this, which are integral to any business. But, yeah. you know, if you took, you know, maybe the values 
of Apple yeah. and the Apple logo onto yeah. the street of London, everybody, like 80% of the people would recognize yeah, yeah. the logo. They yeah. wouldn't recognize the values that Apple yeah. live by. So yeah. I think, you know, a logo is definitely an external force that helps yes. engage um whereas a lot of the strategy elements are more internal uh, that help you express certain mm -hmm. things yeah um so yeah i would say it helps you to it helps facilitate the com all conversations that you ever want to have in the future yeah. is the guide that's why I, I love would. that you know i i used to work for a company called landman in sweden which is yeah. a big company owned by farmers but they have a sprout you know, that sprout, you can see it everywhere. Like everyone yeah. knows that. I think it had like 90% or 95% of people in Sweden know about wow. that logo. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, that's, you recognize it right away, but you also know what the camp company stands for because it's very clear, a green sprout. It's yeah. owned by Swedish farmers, agriculture, food. You know, it's simple but it's yeah. really effective and good. The company's 100 years old. Wow. There have been designers, branding agencies, who thinks they should change the logo. And I'm like, they're crazy. <laughs> that, that wasn't the last heritage. thing you can do, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. the heritage, exactly. So I'm totally, I'm totally with you. But I think this is a really kind of interesting thing because you have a very unique personal style yourself. And I yeah. see in your background, yeah. It could be like a tattoo place as well, you know. And be. I wonder when people go to you, do they go to you as we want made by James style or we want our own identity and we think you can figure that out? Yeah, it's a, uh, I, I truly believe it's probably a bit of a marriage of both because um, people come to me, like I always like to think, like I said, like people mm. don't come to me for a logo. Yeah, they don't come to me for brand identity. They yeah. come to me for the way I think. Yeah. That's what they're buying. They're buying my brain. Um, and I think that's a really important thing for other creatives to really think about mm. what I just said there. Because yeah. if you're exchanging your – if you're just creating something – you know, this um, this is why I'm, I think creators undervalue themselves is because yes. they think that they are only their output, mm. you know, whereas what they're actually paying for is 17 years worth of knowledge yes. and the way I think and the way I find solutions to things. That's, yes. the, that's the money there, not the actual mm -hmm. logo. So yeah. I think when it comes to design and when clients approach me, mm. they are very much... Because I'm very open about my process. I'm very yeah. open about the way I create. Um, I'm very transparent about, you know, how I do things mm -hmm. and why I do things. Yeah. Ultimately, every brief is different. Every mm -hmm. client is different. Every client has a different audience, has a different yeah. service or product. And that logo has a job to do. Mm -hmm. My job is to give them something mm -hmm. that is different yeah. and works, you know, yeah. ultimately. Anybody can go to Fiverr, <clears throat> anybody yeah. can go to a stock library and find a logo. Mm -hmm. That will work. Do you know what I mean? Ultimately, if you've got 10 bucks, you can go and buy a logo and use it, you know. But my job yeah. is to sell the value of what a proper process and a proper brand yeah. identity can do for that yes. company as okay well. so yeah so let's go a little bit deeper into that because i this is also something that i really preach and i think it's so important to get paid for your thinking so if really for all brand i think a lot of my audience uh, do brand strategy today but a lot of them have a brand identity background and i always yeah. say don't leave that because there's so many like me out there marketing strategy people management consultants, other people. And we went to school and we studied economics and marketing and strategy and business. And most designers didn't. Yeah. So if you really don't want to compete with us when it comes to those things and talk yeah. that language, the strength is to to offer strategy and brand identity together. That's sure. that's my point of view. How do yeah. you think about that? 
Um, how do I think about that? I suppose, you know, as a niche, Annie, should mm. you suggest that? I mean, are they different? Do you know what I mean? Is it, yeah. can you become the best strategist whilst being a creative? Can you become the best creative whilst being a strategist? I think they maybe involve two different brains slightly, um, but they do merge. Mm. Yeah, uh, they do yeah, match. So, yeah. I mean, I know some fantastic strategists who design, and I know some great designers who do a bit of strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, what what would I suggest to people? Um, I, I think knowledge is power, yeah. ultimately. And, yeah. you know, I suppose, like you say, you've got to think about, you know, if you are – a brand identity designer moving into strategy. Mm-hmm. Let's figure out, I think the bigger question is, is why are you doing that move? Yeah. Are you doing that because social media has told you there's more money in it? Are you doing that because it's what's trendy now? Or is it because mm-hmm. it's really what you want to do? Because yeah. if it's not it's really, what it's really you really, really want to do, yeah. you know, the reason you really, really want to do strategy is probably because you're not enjoying the creative side of it mm. as much. Yes. Yeah, you know, I I would personally, I love, I do a bit of strategy. I like every call is there's mm-hmm. a couple of hours of strategy, mm-hmm. but it's not deep dive, yeah. you know, weeks worth of energy. You know, it gives me enough to grow and create. And then I do what I want. Because I yeah. love the creative the side. side. I yeah. love the creative side. If I didn't, I would probably be a strategist. Yeah, I think you're so right. And I always tell people, please, please do what feels right in your heart. And Mm. also think about the value you would give to your client first. The money will follow if you do the right thing. But if you just choose to do it because of the money, I don't think that's a good choice. But I want to I want to challenge you by one thing It's like, What if you and I would do a product together and I would be the brand strategist and you would be the designer and you would have you want to have the perfect brief from me. So say that you're not in the workshop with the client. I always bring the designer, but just pretend. Yeah. Yeah. What what kind of information and insights do you want from me as a brand strategist to get the best brief to start your design work? Um. There's obviously a few things. I mean, there's the company name would be useful, Annie, if possible. Um, (laughs) uh, I think we'll start there. Um, um, But I think, you know, the fundamentals, you know, the heart, the hows, the whys, you know, the what's, you know, Mm -hmm. and the who's, you know, I think these are, I think these are questions that allow me as a designer to understand the big picture, you know, because I think that's, I think to create the little picture, you know, the (laughs) logo, you need the big picture. So I would like to know, you know, what, what, what do they do? You know, who are they? What do they do? What makes them different? Mm -hmm. You know, what are their plans for the future? You know, Mm -hmm. How long have they been going? What What do they do now? What Where are they going to be in five years? Where are they going to be in 10 years? Yeah. Um, are they looking to sell? Are they looking to grow? Yeah. You know, some of these questions. Um, and then I'll probably go into, you know, you know, well, what? Okay, it's great, but everybody does that, Annie. What makes them different? You know, yeah. why? Yeah. What makes their product different from all the other products that are similar? Or what makes mm-hmm. their service offering so different from what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I what I would probably or what I would like is to try and find like I think every brief, every client, like you say, is you know, there's there's a golden nugget. There are a set of golden nuggets within a brief always. Yeah. There are a set and set of golden nuggets within conversations, yeah. within strategy workshops. Yeah, there are things that make people different and it's Mm -hmm. your job and my job to find those and celebrate those so that was that would be kind of where 
I would be asking you to do your job properly, Ali. Yeah. Go, <laughs> go and find those things. And yeah. then that will help me do the creative side of it. Um, but yeah, it's the, the classics, you know, the, you know, I said like that, how they do stuff, you know, who they do it for. Their mm-hmm. audience is obviously a super important thing. Yeah. You know? Who is this logo for? You know, I'm a big believer in, like, I really like, I like to partner with my clients. So mm-hmm. I love, I want them to be like in love with the stuff I create, yeah. but not to the detriment of their audience. You know, if they, yes. for example, if they like, you know, I, you know what I mean? I'm not going to come up with some kind of wanky explanation, mm-hmm. but you know, I, I do want my clients to fall in love. I think if I can get my client to fall in love with the logo, yeah. they're going to want to be with it more every day. They're going to celebrate mm-hmm. it. They're going to love to share it. They're going to love to yeah. talk about it. And that will only help their audience as well. But there's always like, you know, making sure the client likes it, but also building it for the audience, which is really important. Yes. So knowing who it's for, you know, because you could have, you know, just in very obvious, quick explanation terms, you could have a 80 year old man starting a company for teens do you yes, know what I mean yes. what he likes and what they like are very different mm-hmm. so it's mm-hmm. understanding that whatever we create here Daniel is for all these kids yes. do you know what yes. I mean so we've got to remember who our audience is so yeah. that's a big one obviously audience so yeah, those I, are the things I would ask I, I love that and you know it's very similar to how, how I work of course but I, I think one thing that I learned recently I love Brené Brown. And um, Brené Brown is my favorite author. She is. Oh, yeah. I, I think she's amazing. And I she's been doing so much amazing research work. And I also like doing a lot of research. People don't think that because I'm very heart driven, but I don't really. I like kind of service and, and data and stuff too. But what I really, really like is to try to understand people on a mm. deeper level. And I do that by having conversation with people. And Brené said something recently, which is really, you know, it's important for me because that's how I do research. And it's, she said, it's really difficult to walk in someone else's shoes. And that's what we try to do when we empathize. Mm -hmm. So even if we have really good empathy, it's difficult because we have so much assumptions and bias Confirm, uh, con- uh, what's I call uh, confirmation bias? I think confirmation bias. So yes. you you already kind of, you know, you put your own lens on things, even if you don't think that you do it, you do it. So what we need to do, what she said, is really that we have to. And here comes your storytelling. We need to ask people to tell their stories. To yeah. open up and tell their stories, what's important for them, what their challenges are, their pain points, how we can make their lives better, what they miss in their lives, you know, and then we believe them. And if we do that, we get so much insight. So a lot of my research work when I work with clients is I listen to them and I facilitate, but mm-hmm. I also talk to to their customers because I want to hear those stories. And that's often when I found those golden nuggets we talk about. Yeah. So if you don't okay. do that research, I don't really know if all the clients know their audience that well, if you know what I mean. No. What, no, no, what's no. your what's your take on that? Do you do you actually talk to them or do you talk just with the client? Um, a lot of the time I talk with the client, um, but there is a research element. You know, yeah. there has to be an understanding of the industry. Yeah. Uh, the competitors, yeah. you know, how, you know, how obviously you are creating what you create for mm. a person, you know, yeah. an individual, a persona, whatever, mm-hmm. whichever way yeah. you want. So trying to understand, you know, it's very much like, I'll kind of flip the conversation a little bit mm. here, but it's very yeah. much like, so whenever, whenever I'm creating content or whenever yeah. I'm like marketing myself, yeah. like, I don't think of myself as James. I think of myself as like, what would my client want to see mm. James do? Yeah. So that is what drives my decision yes. making. It's like, okay, so if a client was looking to employ me or or buy my services yeah. or a student was looking to join my courses, what would they want to know? And that mm. is how I put myself out into the world with yeah. their lens. Yes. 
you know what I mean? So I think that's very important, mm, even with, yeah. like, especially within an R, you know, even with it as a logo designer. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think, like, what would, how does that audience think? Yeah. You know, how does their, how does their tribe react? What do they yes. do every day? What do they, what do they wear? You know, what time do they go online? You know, what do they eat? Do you know what I mean? So trying to get into the mind yeah. of the other person is essential, I think. And that even comes to like, like I said, our own marketing. Like if anybody's sitting here struggling with like, yeah. I don't know what to post on Instagram or I don't yeah. know how to share my work or my talk about my case studies or mm. whatever. Think about what your potential client would want to see and it opens yes. up whole new world you know okay yeah. so if I was sharing a case study my client would like to know like this is what I say to people who are ever like looking to share portfolios or get mm-hmm. jobs or whatever I say don't worry about filling it with like loads of random work yeah. you know fill it with some spe- specific pieces of work you really really like and not just visuals leave little walkthroughs and talk throughs about your decision making because they 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 can you can get better they can if you get a job they're going to teach you how to do things their way anyway yeah they, they know you're going to get better at illustrator photoshop you yeah. know personal skills or whatever but what they're buying is they're buying your brain they want yes. to understand how you think so yes. if you can share that with them then you're on to a winner there you go there's a little portfolio win for anybody that's out there thinking about I don't know what to share like content on social media I don't know what to share you know okay so who are you trying to reach what's your audience what are you trying to do well I'm trying to get work okay well you need to be sharing your work you need to be sharing how you think and how you come up with ideas like if you're a brand identity designer for example why did you choose these colors you know why did you choose that typeface um why did you create the icon that way these are the things that a client's going to read and go that's the kind of brain I need on my on my work. Yeah, so, um, I love this. And you know what? When you go through what you actually do, you do brand strategy. And this is what I realize with a lot of brand identity designer. Okay. Even if you might not go as deep as I do, you yeah. still do all the parts of it. Because the really important thing is that you said, how are we radical different? Because we need to be different. And we, if we don't know that, if we don't know who we talk to and who we really are and what we stand up for, mm-hmm. uh, it's really difficult to do the rest. But I'm curious, when you say this a couple of hours, how do you charge for that strategy before you start to design? Yeah, I mean, there's always, I mean, I generally do a fixed price for mm-hmm. Okay. Or for logo work. The reason mm-hmm. I do that is because um, as long as I can stick to my process, yeah. as long as they don't get involved in the process, mm-hmm. I like to keep my clients as a controlled part of the process. So when it comes to, you know, pricing, you yeah. know, obviously I have like the call, the two hour call within the price of of my of my fixed price mm. package mm. Um, but there are some people who don't have a clue where to even start they go I know I want a logo I know I need a, I know I need a logo is usually what they say but I don't know what I want I uh, don't even have a name um, mm. I don't you know I've got a product uh, yeah. usually product-based services who mm-hmm. kind of go down this road yeah and I just need help and that is where we would, I would probably start to upsell maybe more yeah. of a, a brand strategy kind of yeah. process, um, which would be a slightly deeper, maybe half a day or couple two half day sessions where obviously we find out a lot more. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we kind of dive deeper into what we have figured out. So once we've figured yeah. out what it is, we kind of break that down to what that is. Um, so that, but that's quite rare. I mean, I'm very lucky that, a lot of people have already done, you know, I am a designer brought in after the strategist has been there. Mm. Um, so that's always quite lucky for me, but it wasn't always that way, do you know what I mean, yeah. in the early stages. But yeah, I think, you know, as long as, you know, as long as, like, for example, I 
you know, like process is power. So like, I think, you know, process is directly equates to profit. Do you know what I mean? If you have no idea about your process, this is I speak to some like logo designers, brand identity designers or whatever. And they'll be like, I'll be like, they'll be like, I'm struggling. I don't know if I'm doing this right or blah, 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 blah. And I'll go, okay, let's, let's start. Let's start from the beginning. You know, how long on average does it take you to, create a logo or create a brand identity for a client, you know, logo, few options if that's what you do and a, and a brand identity guide book and maybe some mock-ups or the rest of it. And I'm amazed that a lot of the answers I get are like, they're so fluid. They're like, mm. oh, one to two weeks. And I go, okay, you know, well, if it's one week, you might be making money. If it's two weeks, you're making no money. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. So it's this kind is what of I say un- all the time. Oh yeah, my God. so kind of understand. I, I I know like to the minute almost exactly how long mm. it takes me to do logos. I even know how long it takes me to go through my revision process because uh, that is the only way I know whether I'm making any money. This is so important. Everyone listening now, this is so important because this is what I always talk about when sometimes I get a little bit upset when we talk about Everyone is like so against hourly. I also am against hourly, but mm. most people don't know what value-based <laughs> pricing is. Yeah. So because what you just said that you they don't know how long it takes, so it's easy to fool yourself and to say, I take this fixed price. I say value-based, but which is not really the case, no. but it's a fixed price. Yeah. And then they don't know how long and then they think, oh, I charge 10K. Yeah. So then they feel so much imposter that they did that. So instead they work for four weeks. Yeah. Because you don't have that process that you have. And mm. then it's not so much money well, after all, you know, and I good. see this and be seeing this for 20 years. And I'm like, I feel that I want to help. Yeah. And encourage designers to find that process and to really charge for 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 your time and for your thinking. Yeah, because exactly. isn't this like something that a lot of people do? They spend way too much time. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I mean I I I know um I believe I know that the biggest problem with um where a lot of creatives are failing yeah is process yes what they would have to do is refine their process and they would win um Mm. and that comes down to habit forming and routines and all the rest of it but you know i truly believe you know if you have a good profit process you know because what process does it does a few things it when i get into the office every single day Mm. i know exactly what i need to do because yes. I have a cert, I have stages in my process. I know I cannot move on to the next stage of my process unless I've done this process before. So I know a lot of creatives. So I don't like to generalize too much, but it, mm-hmm. it is a quite yeah. a common conversation yeah. I have. Yeah. It's like they get into the office mm-hmm. and they talk about things like creative block, um, mm. which I don't believe is real. I think creative block is just lack of routine, lack of process. And, you know, and I, I mainly lack of routine because yeah. you might have stayed up till three o'clock in the morning gaming, you know, slept in for I need to go and do some work. And then mm-hmm. maybe the next night you go to bed at 5 p.m. Then you wake up at 6 a.m. Then, you know, if you're doing this, basically mm-hmm. what a good routine will do is it will allow your brain to know when it's supposed to work and when it's supposed to not work. Yeah. So for the say for the last, like five years at the very minimum, you know, I have gone to bed at the same time, got up at the same time, gone to work at the same time, finished work at the same time. I'm very functional in the morning. So from eight till two, I'll do all my client work from two till four. I'll do social media, emailing, marketing, personal growth stuff from four till six. I'll be doing client calls, podcasts, other little elements because all my brain power, like, so I'm a morning person, so that's yeah. that well for me. Yeah. But if I was an afternoon person, I'd probably flip it. I'd probably wake up mm. and then I'd do all of my bits, like emails, blah, 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 in the morning. And then when my brain was kicked in, I'd yeah. switch to the afternoon. But 
Play, creative block is, I think, an excuse for bad habits, bad processes, and bad routines. Personally, that's what I think. I think this is so awesome because the thing is, we also often talk about just the pricing. And I don't think pricing and selling is the big issue here, because if you don't have those routines, if you don't have the process, that's also why I have a framework for brand strategy. And everyone is like, I just want to create my own. And I'm like, why when you don't yeah. <laughs> just start out, yeah. you know, because that process is really important, because then you know, you do step by step, the things you actually need to do in a process, which yeah. someone have been doing for many years. So exactly. it's actually just copy it, you know, and do it. Exactly. But, 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 you know, okay, I just want to ask you about something when we go into this, because I feel I might need some consultant for you off air here, because yeah. I think you need to have made by Annie here, because um, my, <laughs> my process for brand strategy is very structured. My yeah. process for my own messy head is not structured. So when you say I go to bed the same time, I wake up, I do this structured work. I'm like, oh my God, I you need help. I need help. <laughs> I don't do that. And this is like, I freak out because I'm like, so it's so messy in here. Yeah. And so I would love that structure, but how, okay. So we talk about the left and the right brain and you're so creative. How can you be so structured and logic at the same time? Have you always been like this? Uh, I mean, I've always, you know, I was the kid, but I couldn't go to bed until all of my shoes were lined up and my <gasps> curtains were closed. I had to close all the cupboard doors. I had to make sure like, everything, like even on my desk, everything has to be aligned, which is weird. Is it OCD? I I think a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit OCD. And I think mm -hmm. that's where my love for line, um, space, you know, mm -hmm. accuracy comes from. But, you know, I was also an illustrator and uh, artist. So I think yeah. I've collided these two kind of brains. But I have, I mean, to be totally honest, it has been... Um, you know, I wasn't always, I was always, you know, I've always liked things to align, but I haven't yeah. always been, you know, structured in my kind of, sorry, my dog's barking outside. I love dogs. It doesn't but, I have, but I haven't been kind of structured. Like I would sometimes, I mean, this is why I started to implement these things is because mm. I was getting to work yeah. and I was sitting there and I was going, no, nothing nothing's coming up and I was like okay so I've got to do work but I can't do work and it was starting to get me very frustrated but then I can mm. when you break it back you go well hang on a minute you drank all night you went to bed at three in the morning you haven't eaten yet you didn't sleep very well because you were drunk you know mm. and now you're trying to work a full day and be creative that mm. those, those don't align yeah. so um yeah so for some for, as I got busier and busier I realized that I needed to have a much better routine to be able to function. You know, I like my time off. You know, I really enjoy relaxing. I really enjoy spending time with my wife, you know, mm. really enjoy my dog walks in the morning. Yeah. So I want to do those things just as much as I want to help my clients and help other people online. Yeah. So the morning is my time. The day is their time and the evening is my time. And if I wasn't, functioning at my very best during that time yeah I wouldn't get that time do you know what I mean yeah. so if I was if I wasn't going to bed and getting my decent sleep I wouldn't be able to get up in the morning at the time I want to be able to have mm. time to walk my mm. dog and have breakfast and have a bit of a read yeah. you know so before I even get to work I've been up for two hours and I start work at eight do you know what I mean so yeah. when I get in at eight I'm buzzing I'm ready to go I want my second coffee. Um, there's no sitting at my desk going, I don't know what to do. I'll bum around on Instagram for a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll go online and do something. You know, I'm straight yeah. into work. Don't rest. Wow. Six hours straight, you know, maybe with a coffee break and a wee break in between, yeah. you know. And I get, I get more done now in a six year, six hour period, like four full on work than I would usually have done 
10 years ago in three to four days. Wow, this is amazing. Do you, when you talk about your coaching and, and training and teaching people now, is this something you do also, or, or is it more the creative side of it? I, I'm, I'm process, mm -hmm. you know, so there are like three things that I like to focus on. You know, I think there are, yeah, there are three things that kind of every creative should be working on. Yeah. You know, one of them is trust. You know, if we can get people to trust us, we can build a reputation, we're going to be winning. Strategy. We need to have a strategy. We need to understand how we grow business, you know, content. We need to understand how we're going to execute certain things. And then the third one is process, client mm -hmm. process, you know, personal, you know, creative process, um, how to like the onboarding process, you know, how to get, you know, th there's so many processes within processes. Um, and a lot, yeah, a lot of the stuff that I lean into, because I know, As creatives, we're always going to be creative. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We can all get better by at drawing by drawing. We can all get yes. better at software by using that software. But I don't think, I personally don't think within the educational system um, or within the like degree system or even you know, like the internships or the kind of scholarship programs or whatever, there is not enough um, focus on business and, yeah. and, and the process of running a business and the understanding of what it takes to run a business. Because I am by far the best logo designer on the planet, but I know how to run a business. Yes. So that allows me to do better at logo design. Mm. I think if business... I think the curriculum needs slightly changing and we people need to understand the power of habits, yes, routines, you know, like I said, strategy, you know, conversation, mm. you know, but actually having a proper process that allows them to function at their very best. Because you can be, you know, I could actually not feel, I could wake up one day and not feel very well, but yeah. I could still go into work and achieve. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and that is all down to process. So that's definitely something that I um, am a big champion of is process is power for sure. And, and also it's being professional. Yeah. I mean, ultimately that's, yeah. that's all it is. I mean, this is, I think this is another kind of funny conversation, mm. isn't it? With reference to, because people think, oh, we're creatives. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We just kind of wake up and we smoke a bit of weed and, Maybe we go and play a computer game and we just create some cool stuff. And these are the people not making any money, no. ultimately. You know, some of them might be, yeah. you know. Um, but, yeah, ultimately, for me, it's mm. like this is a business, you know. Yeah. If you are just – if you're not making any money and you're not growing, yeah. um, it's a hobby, you know. Yes, People get so mad when I say things like that, but it is kind of sometimes the truth hurts. And, you know, I would like you to ask a last question before we end this. Love that. Yeah. You, I know you live in a small town, you said, a village. Yeah. If Tiny. you would live anywhere else in the world, where would that be? Oh, any, 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 any. <sighs> Up a mountain with snow in a log cabin in Switzerland, I think. <gasps> Or in Sweden. Or in Sweden. <laughs> Anywhere where there's mountain. Do you know what I love most about the mountains is that they make me realize how insignificant I am. And that is powerful. Do you know what I mean? Because I think yeah. when you're online, when you've got a bit of a following, mm. Um, it's very easy to get self-obsessed and mm. you, you kind of revel in your own self-importance. Yeah. Nature, mountains, yeah. just looking up at that makes me realize that, you know, the world is very big and it's full of much bigger things than me. And it actually kind of grounds me a lot, you know, being in nature. So mountains, that. snow, log cabin, that's where mm. I'd be. In Sweden. How about that? When do you come to Stockholm? Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> if you get here, can we do a workshop together? I'd love that. Yeah. I think that would be so cool. I think it'd be cool. I mean, I'd love to do more stuff with you. Yeah. I've got I've got some like I'm st- I'm still kind of going through this kind of like transition a little bit mm-hmm. of like I still have a lot of client work because the money's really good. Yeah. You know what I mean, but there's this other side of me which mm-hmm. is like just ready. It's ready to pounce this kind of mm-hmm. full on educator guide. Um, yeah. And obviously, I've only just like only just bought out my course. The book only came out this year, and the kind of the power that's generated for me in me personally yeah. it's given yeah. me like right. This is my plan for the next ten years. Um, I but I want to lean more and more into the educational side mm. yeah. um, and partnering with people like you to bring that to life. Yeah. I don't know how that happened yet. I don't know how that works, but I know, you know, aligning with the right people who think like me, but Mm -hmm. do other things is the way to grow. Um, So I'd love to do something with you. I don't know what that is. (laughs) I don't know how we do it, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And you know what? I, I agree so much with you. But the thing is, I gave myself six months to do Mm. that transformation. Yeah. And it wasn't so much time, but I realized that I didn't want to do client work the same way I've been doing it before. So when people reach out to me and say, like, can you do a brand strategy for us? I don't do it that way. But what I do, because I enjoy it, is doing workshops. Yeah. So I can still do what I'm doing, but I do it in a workshop format. Like I don't work one month or three months then with a long process. Like I do yeah. one workshop, you know? Yeah. I enjoy doing that. Yeah. Otherwise I just like teaching and yeah. creating content. Yeah, and that's that honestly, that's what buzzes me is creating the content and helping people. Mm. Um and you know, I love, don't get me wrong, I love clients. I love working with yeah. clients, but I don't think it's my calling. Mm. You know, ultimately my main calling. If somebody comes to me and says, you we need you on our brand identity and this is this is the funny thing you know i've worked so hard to become what i what i feel that i have become or am becoming you know known Mm. as a you know yeah good reputation good designer good human that is kind of Mm. what i wanted in the design space but i think there's Mm. another level for me which i think which i'm not tapping into enough which is the educational side of things but because there's this inner kid designer who's holding on to the fact that he wants he wants to be the best designer he can possibly be that's I think that's what it is I'm torn to kind of I want to be over here but there's just there's something I want to hold on to but maybe I never have to let go of that maybe it's still something I can do I don't know what's what I mean what's your advice for somebody who has made that made that move you know what i i I don't like giving advice because i think that we all have our own path and i don't think we need to decide about things i mean if apple comes and asks if i want to do something (laughs) you might say yes you know we don't have to say we never do it again yeah I just, for me, it was kind of important to just make a decision that I kind of need to burn the bridge behind me a little bit because otherwise I will never take the step. So I just had to do it. Uh, yeah. But I didn't have really that passion. I mean, you have the creative thing that you're really passionate about. For me, it was so much about understanding people, having this conversation, uh, helping um you know, clarifying. And I think I could do all of that in teaching. So for me, it was a little bit like when I realized that I've been part of building the most sustainable, one of the most sustainable brands in Sweden, which really shared my values, you know, and I was proud of it. Then I felt, what can I do next? And I don't think I can help more than maybe 10 clients a year, something like that. 
And if I can educate people instead, a group of Padawans out there creating sustainable brands, you know, making the world better for themselves, actually, but also for clients, of course, and for the planet. If I can contribute with that, that's how I want to make an impact. And I can't do it myself. I need to kind of have that ripple effect of teaching yeah. other people so they can do it. So I think that was so so important for me. And when I realized it, I didn't have any way back. Like I couldn't Yeah. I couldn't see another future for me. So I just had to do it. Yeah. And I, so, so that's you know, the only thing that holding me back is me. Is holding yeah. on to the past right now. I'm holding on to I'm holding on to the person that I wanted to become 10 years ago, but that person's changed now. Um, And it is more about impact for me. I can only bring so much impact to so many clients. Mm, Whereas I know I can bring way more impact if I teach other people to bring impact. You know, not only the impact I give them, but the impact they ripple on in their life. So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm at my crossroads. So I'm... um, you know, I'm holding on to dear life because people keep asking me and yeah. giving me good money to do logos. But there is this side <laughs> of me that kind of says, because I'm like, I'm very much like all or nothing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, me too. The only way I'm going to make a success out of this is if I put my Holly. full ass into it. Because at the moment, I'm kind of like client education. Mm. You know, it's kind of a little bit, sometimes do you know what I mean whereas if yeah. I was like full on yeah. one or other I know I could I know yeah I could. you know uh, I feel you I'm ha- I'm here to support you and mm-hmm. if you want you're you so tough with your tattoos and your beard and everything I'm a little bit more girly so what I do is that I embarrassing here but what I do when I need yeah. a little bit like I listen to <laughs> I love Disney too. I listen to Frozen and Into the Unknown. That song, Into the Unknown and Let It Go, those two are my favorite. Let It Go when I have to tell something really vulnerable on social media and I want to tell a story about myself and let go of the judgment on myself and Into the Unknown when I need a little bit that push that I need to take that that step into the unknown. So if you're with your beard and tough guy, if you want to listen to a little bit Frozen, might help you. It's one of my favorite films. I I really like it. Yeah, I love it. As I said, this is all a facade. Don't worry about any of this. Um, um, But Annie, I've got a call at 6.30. Yeah, yeah. we need to stop. Okay, thank you so much. And just, can you please just uh, tell people where they find you if they don't um, follow you and I can have links and stuff, but where do people easiest find you online? They People can find, luckily, I've been around for a while. So if you just type in Made by James into Google, everybody can find me there. But Instagram at made.by.james, YouTube made by James, um, my website, the made by James, the made by James, made by yeah. James. Just type made in by made James. by James. Made, made by James, made, made by everywhere. Annie. Made by thank Annie. You, <laughs> thank you so, so much. I really appreciate you so much. And I'm so glad we met. I am yeah. really so glad we met. I hope we can meet in real life soon. Part of a thriving relationship together. Oh. And- it's going to be great. You're going to be my pen pal. Yeah. Pen pal. I love that. Thank yeah. you so much. Bye, Take mate. care. Take care of yourself. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Your style is no match for mine. Ah!